to the first exam. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, then uh, we're also, we got through chapter seven, um, or not some of chapter seven, I should say. So we're, we're uh, continuing that. So let's get started. So we were, um, you know, in the part where it's chapter seven is external flow. So we already covered this flat plate parallel flow, right? So we talked about Reynolds number for the transition between laminar and turbulent, right? Talked about where the flow can be tripped, so it's turbulent the whole way, or we have where it transitions from laminar to turbulent. We also Mentioned there could be an unheated starting length where the boundary layer for the thermal does not start growing until there's until there's heating. Okay, and then we have the solution that we have from uh, for from the boundary layer equations for this laminar constant flow over a isothermal plate, where we solve it and we get what that boundary layer profile looks for the velocity and looks for the thermal boundary layer of what that profile looks with different Prandtl numbers, okay? And from that profile, now we can get what uh, we want out of it, which is what that boundary layer thickness is, what the friction factor is, what the Nusselt number is, and these are all local parameters. So if we averaged them, we got the average parameters, and then we have the case for turbulent, Local turbulent, average turbulent, where it's when it has transition or when it's tripped. Okay, and then here's how we ha get the local uh, Nusselt number for an unheated starting length, and then the average Nusselt number um, for that unheated starting length. And then we did the example 7.17, a quick example where we had either the smooth or the rough surface first. And we had to, you know, figure out which had the lower heat gain. So we went through that and got our answer. So now we're on 7.19. And 7.19, it's steel AI SI 1010 plates of thickness six millimeters and length of one millimeter on a side are conveyed from a heat treatment process and are concurrently cooled by atmospheric air of a velocity u infinity equal to 10 meters per second and t infinity of 20 degrees celsius in parallel flow over the plates and then they show the schematic you see and then they say for an initial plate temperature di of 300 degrees celsius what is the rate of heat transfer from the plate what is the corresponding rate of change of the plate temperature the velocity of the air is much larger than that of the plate. Okay, so we're looking for, and they give us parameters of the plate. Okay, first off, we're looking for the initial rate of heat transfer from the plate and then the rate of change of plate temperature. Okay, so we have then our plate, right? Boundary runner plate. So initial rate of heat transfer from the plate is going to be our heat off of that plate, okay? And then the rate of change of the plate temperature is just the dt, dt of the plate, okay? All right, so then we look at it. We see, you know, they get a lot of properties here, but um, first off, we'll start with that initial rate of heat transfer from the plate. Okay, so we have our cross-sectional area here. Okay, heat from our Newton's law of cooling off of our area is that initial temperature minus T infinity. We got the heat, right? So then figuring out our Nusselt number. And so basically, the main new thing is this convection coefficient, okay? Our equation for the convection coefficient, the average one, is this, okay? So that means we have the length, we can get the properties. 
So we need Nussel lumber, and that's what you see right here is the Nussel lumber, okay? And that requires the Reynolds number, okay? So we get the Reynolds number, which also tells us the flow is laminar. So that means we can use the equation that's for laminar, okay? And we get the Nussel number. We then can rearrange our equation and get the convection coefficient, put it back into Newton's law of cooling right there. Okay. And we get our answer of 6,780 watts. Right. So that's part A. Part B. when it shows up is, right, we did the initial rate of heat transfer from the plate, now we need the rate of change of plate, okay? So if we just look at conservation of energy, we have convection leaving, and we have the change in energy stored. There's no generated, there's no energy in, we're just cooling it from convection, we have energy stored that's changing the D, D, P. All right, so that is what you see here, is the energy stored on the left, they're showing it, and then this is our out. Okay, so this big thing is here, is this is volume that they're kind of showing right here. All right, rho volume C is mass, right? So, or sorry, density is volume is mass, and then times C is our, we get, um, anyways, we get, density times volume times specific heat, and we have dt, dt, and then they wanted the initial, right? So then here's our cooling again, area, and we have to just rearrange and solve for dt, dt, so just moving everything around, getting our parameters, we get negative 0.26 degrees Celsius per second, okay? And in actuality, in part B, we need to, to do the Biot number to check this analysis because right here we're assuming an isothermal plate because we're assuming at any given time the plate temperature is the same throughout. Okay, and you'll see it here. Plates are isothermal, so we're making that assumption where we need to check the Biot number, and the Biot number ends up being very small, so the lump capacitance method that we're using here is valid. We're just assuming that it's all the same temperature. 